Sea Portable for English Lighthouse, English Castles, QRZ. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So you may have saw one of my past videos where I covered a neat little radio called the Q900 version 3. Now in this video we'll be taking a look at version 4, covering the improvements and new features which have been added to this ultra compact multiband and multi-mode portable transceiver. So what's new in version 4 compared to version 3? Well the first major update which won't appeal to everyone is the support for transmit and receive on the 4 meter band which covers between 70 and 70.5 megahertz. The next major update is to the audio output and that's from the headphone jack and also when using DMR if you have DMR installed. I noticed on version 3 that the audio output when using DMR was a little bit low but on version 4 it's fully controllable with the full range using the AF menu. The other major update is the RF routing when using VHF or UHF. Now this has been changed in V4 with all RX and TX for VHF and UHF coming in and out of antenna port 2 which is the SMA connector and then HF 50 and 70 MHz all comes in and out of the antenna port 1 which is the SO239 connection much more like we're used to seeing on top tier radios. Now depending which version or modules you choose to have fitted will determine what comes in the box. However as standard you will get the radio in a hard plastic carry case along with a microphone power lead and a USB-C cable. USB-C cable is used to either charge the internal battery or provide cat control and audio interface to a computer. Now if you've ordered the version with the GPS module then you'll also receive a GPS antenna in the box which just plugs into the back of the radio. If you've not seen this style of radio before then the first thing you'll probably notice is there is no conventional spin-in VFO dial. However don't let that put you off because after some time with the Q900 you get used to using the buttons to change frequency. Now as this radio has a waterfall and scope display it makes it even easier to tune into other stations. There are other solutions for the VFO and full radio control which come in the form of a USB keyboard or using an app on your mobile phone or tablet via Bluetooth. Now more about that later in the video. Nearly all the features and functions can be accessed via the buttons on the front panel and most buttons have dual function meaning if you hold the button down it will access another feature. Now this saves going into menus constantly just to find a simple setting like power levels or audio levels. A couple of icons on the screen which you may notice is the T and the battery level indicator. The T is illuminated when the internal tuner is active. The internal tuner works for the entire HF band up to 70 MHz. The battery indicator shows the current level of the internal rechargeable battery. Along with the supply voltage shown on the screen, you can keep an eye on the battery level when using portable. You'll also notice an NR indicator which illuminates when the inbuilt DSP has been activated. The DSP is fully adjustable, allowing the user to set the noise reduction level. This is accessed by holding the DSP button in momentarily. Now pressing and holding in the menu button brings us to the main menu, which covers some options which may not be enabled. Firstly, if you have the DMR module fitted, this is where you can access the DMR settings to change things like talk group, slot and caller ID. This of course will not work if you don't have the DMR module installed. Now as this radio contains a channel memory feature, using the Windows software you can create channel memories which also contain the DMR settings, so a channel for each of your favourite talk groups is possible. If you have the compass module installed then the compass screen will show you details from the GPS. Now unfortunately this data is not used anywhere if you're outside of China, as in China you can install a mobile data sim and then send this position data to the APRS IS servers over GSM. Now I'm not sure why it won't work in Europe or the US but maybe it's something to do with the GSM module. A VSWR scan is one of the most useful features. Now even though the radio has an inbuilt tuner you may wish to set up a resonant antenna to make it more efficient than using the internal tuner. Now on the settings page there are some useful adjustments. 
such as turning on and off the VSWR protection. You can also set the level at which the protection kicks in. Now let's just cover what the connections are on the rear panel. So on the left we have the SO239 connection, which I mentioned earlier is used for HF6 and 4. Next to this we have the ground connection point, a DC input, a USB hub connection, which can be used for connecting a USB memory stick to update the firmware, or you can connect a USB keyboard to control the radio. Now more details on that later. The USB-C connection next to this can be plugged into your computer. This will provide a COM port and an audio in and out interface on your computer. So great for CAT control and also audio using digital applications such as FDA or SSTV. Incidentally, the CAT control protocol is the same as the Yaesu FT817. Now next to the USB-C connection, we have some 3.5 millimeter sockets, which can be used for audio, PTT control, and also a CW key. The ethernet connection is apparently unused at the moment, just like we've seen on all of the previous models. But above this, there are two SMA connections. One is the connection for the GPS antenna, if you have it, and the other is antenna port two, which as mentioned earlier, is used for transmit and receive on the VHF and UHF bands. So let's take a listen on the HF bands to see what the Q900 version 4 sounds like on HF. Now incidentally, the recording of the audio is using the USB audio interface, which is available when plugged in via USB. I thought it makes more sense to do this, otherwise you're just going to be hearing a speaker to the microphone on my camera. Doing it this way, you can hear exactly what the receiver is receiving. Just looked it up on the QRZ. It's a uh, club station, is it? Royal Signals ARS club call, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah, it is, yeah. And his own call sign is, is G, uh, G, uh, G4KLE. Uh, G4KLE is his own call sign, normally on. Land pencil. Land pencil extended me. Okay, the working condition from your... All right. <laughs> X-ray Golf Oscar Portable. Uh, X-ray Golf Oscar Portable, I think that is. 2E0, X-ray Golf Oscar Portable. Uh, this is Mike Zero, Delta Papa Mike Portable. The name is Harry, Hotel Alpha Ro <laughs> Romeo, Romeo Yankee. 2E0, XGO Stroke Portable. M0 DPM Portable. Just a quick, st uh, I give you the answer, the weather. The weather is, uh, is two days, three days, that is raining continuously. Raining continuously, uh, everybody, there is water, and the river are full of water. We have had a very long and dry winter, uh, with no rain, everybody for a so bad, uh, a lot of trouble. Gets in uh, sorted out. Uh, thanks for the uh, actually, Bill. Um, yeah, the lighthouse keeper, and uh, of course, there's also the uh, the repeat ones for the uh, the castles as well. Um, so uh, zero zero six seven nine is right now. Great stuff. Thanks, Bill. Uh, ten eleven. Yeah, seven three is an eleven. Bye bye. Delta Quebec Whiskey. The station with Delta Quebec, try again. Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, QSL. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, good evening, 59 plus 10, QSL. Yes, yeah, so you're also 59 plus 10 here into the UK as well. Uh, thank you very much for the contact. As mentioned earlier, memory channels are available on the Q900 version 4, 
And by using the free software utility over USB, you can create them on your computer and then download them to the radio. Each channel can be set to any mode, even DMR, as there are specific fields for either caller ID, talk groups, color code, etc. Obviously, the DMR selection will only work on either VHF or UHF, but you can create channels to suit your needs for your favorite talk groups or repeaters. Other modes like AM and SSB, for example, can of course be used on any band. To enable or disable memory mode, simply hold in the AF button momentarily, then it will show the pre-programmed memory channels on screen. You can then use the up and down arrow keys to change the channel. Another piece of software is an application called CNSDR, which uses an IQ stream from the radio to display the selected bandwidth as a spectrum on your computer. You do need to change the audio source on the radio from USB to SDR for this to work. Although if you forget to do this, you can also change it within the CNSDR software. The CNSDR software also allows full control of the radio, changing frequencies and mode. It's quite a nice convenient way of using the radio while at home in the shack and not having to fiddle with the little buttons on the front panel. So there we go guys, the Q900 version 4. Now I know full well that there are some things missing in this video and that's done intentionally because I want to create other videos which will address parts of this radio. For example, I want to test out the 4 meter 70 MHz support on the Q900 V4. Unfortunately, there is not much activity on 4 around this area. So I will need to wait until there's a net on or I can go mobile and get to high ground. Another video which I will make will cover the RF output power and spurious signals for every single band that this radio covers. Now that in itself will be quite a lengthy video and I didn't really want to make this video too long. We'll also create a dedicated video on using DMR, showing how it sounds in the real world. So if you're interested in seeing those videos, make sure to be subscribed so you're notified when I release those videos. Now don't worry, you will not have to wait long as these videos are already in production and will be released quite soon. Now when I made a video on the Q900 V3, I believe it sold out quite quickly as there was only a limited number available. For the best service and support, please check out the purchase link in my video description as I know that that seller works directly with the manufacturer of this radio. If there's anything specific that you would like me to cover in future videos, then please leave a comment down below. I will be more than happy to show any feature or function of this radio working and if it doesn't work well, I will show you in the video. So make sure to ask your questions below. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.